Hey guys, so um, Brightwin just updated their Weathering Waves version 1.1 tier list and I kind of wanted to take a look at what they put in in their tier list and what they changed and basically give my thoughts on every uh, single one of these. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe, try my best to grow this channel as much as possible and maybe one day make it as a job of mine. So if you guys want to help me make my dream come true, subscribing and liking the video would be absolutely amazing. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so starting off, uh, keep that in mind that it is only from Tower of Adversity and not any other game mode. So Depth of Elusive Realms and or uh, simulations are not uh, kept in mind when making this tier list. So starting off with tier zero, uh, Jinshi as a, the DPS. I feel like Jinshi is, I do agree with it. Jinshi is fucking strong and definitely worth, she was worth picking up right now. She was, she's out of rotation, but she proved herself to be like one of the best characters in the game right now. And I feel like I definitely agree. Uh, the pros and cons uh, are, uh, do make sense here. Um, basically they're saying here that uh, she's really, really fluid in mid air and her burst damage is absolutely insane. And also uh, has, she's future proof basically because there's a lot of characters right now that have coordinated attacks. And then obviously next update, you know, there's Jeji um, coming out with uh, her coordinated attack ultimate. So she's gonna be even stronger and yeah it makes her very very future proof and that's actually kind of uh, surprising uh, for a dps because usually dps characters aren't really future proof like right now we're saying kalcharo being worse and worse and being power crept and jian also being power crept by jinshi and i feel like jinshi is just was a really really good pickup when she came out so the cons also make sense sort of because here they're saying that you know incarnation or state in everyone jinshi is more prone to taking damage i feel like that's not really a con and more of if you have hands with jinshi and she and it's just part of her play style i guess yeah because it's part of her play style makes her makes it harder for for other players to play her properly and you know the coordinated attacks because it's also kind of conflicting here they're saying that you know coordinated attacks it, she needs coordinated attack teammates but here they're saying that coordinated attacks might get released so it's a pro and a con at the same time uh but i don't know i feel like there's a lot of really really strong characters that have coordinated attacks like verena and yinlin and you know Jin she pairs up really really well with them so yeah uh, best damage combos that's not really a restriction too i feel like she doesn't really have any restrictions i'm gonna be honest it's just the mid-air attack makes her prone to, to some attacks but that's pretty much it so next off we have we have yinlin yo yinlin yo oh my god this character bro she's i'm so happy that i got this character and you have no idea how much she's carrying me right now i'm playing her with chun li right now and yo the damage is crazy bro you can put it you can play her with quick swap basically you play her with quick swap teams and electro based teams so Obviously, can, you can pair her up with Kalcharo, which is pretty good uh, because you can use her outro skill to, to increase his damage and his resident liberation damage. But also, you can use her for coordinated attack teams like Shenshi, where you can basically stock incarnation stacks with, with Shenshi and you're gonna deal a lot of damage. Or you can use her with quick swap teams. So, stuff like Shang Li, just quick swap. Uh, use let's say uh, E uh, enhanced attack and then swap or alt enhanced attack whatever swap into, into Chang Li and then perform your combo and then she's gonna do like outro like off field damage which is very very strong she's super super strong and I feel like everyone should have gotten her pretty pretty quick she has gigantic AOE damage with her with her heavy attack uh, when bar is up she has a lot of damage um, uh, her burst damage is really really strong um, because she can basically kill the small guys and then she can does a lot of damage she has a lot of speed very good damage uh very very easy to play too uh, look at this one this one's fucking funny look at this you will often get distracted while playing her it's because of the alt bro that's not a con bro what, what the fuck is ryan when putting bro what this what the fuck is this shit ultra currently feels a bit useless due to how she is best quick swapping that's true i agree with this i call charo bro yeah, i think he's, he's He's kind of ass right now compared to other dps in the game but uh yeah definitely definitely could be seen as a con swap cancel might be me. that's true it, this happens a lot for me when i swap it, it cancels some of my attacks uh and it just fucks up some of my attacks that i do and i get fucked up in tower adversity for sure i'll be my mind not like quick swapping constantly that's that's also not really a con just prefer this preference in terms of clay style but this definitely made me maybe fucking laugh that was that's pretty funny honestly it's kind of fun uh next we have verena there's um, i mean i'm, I'm gonna be honest 
honest like this character is just busted bro like she gives sustain gives healing um grants buffs and bro you don't really need to, to understand how to play her to play her properly and she just does a field damage to coordinated attacks like she just so fucking strong like she's so strong like i'm gonna make a guide on her and then explain to, to you guys why she's so strong for no reason and yeah like there's literally no reason like if you if you go here like if you if you see the the pros and cons that they put in they just put one con bro she's that broke and it's not even a con like intro still causes her to causes her to enter the air delaying the use of her echo it just delays the echo and the ultimate and the resonance skill and that's it bro what this character is so stupid bro like i i would recommend every single f2b player that's either started the game or has not used their five star uh free five star or uh their select in the standard banner please select Verena. like she will carry you throughout the entire game and i'm not joking when i say this so definitely try and give Verena a shot for sure so i do agree with the tier zero but i feel like there might be some characters that need tiers i feel like so here we oh actually tier 0.5 makes sense so chang li i've been playing chang li since uh, she came out i've got a weapon and the damage has been absolutely insane i've been doing 100k damage for no reason with her and i actually do agree on her on how she could play basically um in terms of what they're saying here basically they're saying that she's pretty pretty good in quick swap teams so here ultra scale gives 20 percent fusion amplifier this is pretty good this is a, a way to, to use it uh, she's been used in, in quick swap teams a lot has multiple cutting potent potent gap closer in her kit allowing to stick bosses effective cooldown management so basically what you can do with, with what they're saying here is that you can you can rotate her skill or her kit pretty pretty well and making it so that she doesn't run out of skills basically she's so so strong uh um, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to play it for most players. Uh, most of her strongest can require frequent use of her in the skill, which have 12 second cooldown. Must pay attention to play around like, effectively. Yeah. So when you're playing it, when you're playing Ch Chang Li, you have to also take into consideration uh, of her E because her E has a really pretty long cooldown. Even though she did get buffed, she is she is uh, she does have some weaknesses for sure. So here it says has heavy reliance on quick swapping. I mean that's not really con. Uh, current currently missing the, an ideal partner who is fully unlock her potential. I feel like I feel like what she's missing right now is uh, fusion damage she she's the one that gives the fusion damage amplifier but i feel like what she what she needs is definitely a uh, fusion support which uh which doesn't really uh, we, we don't really have right now uh, but she is super strong i feel like she's gonna be very tier zero uh, later on in the future and obviously when a when a huge fusion damage dealer uh comes out that is um that is better than Changli. obviously Changli will replace herself as a hybrid where uh she's gonna basically support this character or be acting as a sub dps so encore with a release of chang li she's gonna be very very strong uh she does th literally the same thing where you know you can basically use her as a quick swap so nothing really too crazy here uh she basically got, got buffed because of chang li and i feel like this is a really good place to put her and i definitely agree with it um jian also agree with this one honestly he's very very strong but jin Shi, since her release he got a bit power crap so uh he's still very very good his ultimate is very strong he is a bit you know uh susceptible to you know high damage and and I feel like he's a he's a glass cannon, so you, you'd have to put him with uh, characters that give him a lot of sustain. So stuff like Jianshin or Varina work very very well with him, and I, I definitely agree where where the spot is, in my opinion. So here they put Mortify S2 and then um, Sanhua S2, and I also agree with this honestly. Mortify, uh, if he's if Mortify is S6, I'm pretty sure it'd be like tier zero. But S2, yeah, I mean. Look what he unlocks at S2. Uh, at S2, he unlocks. Uh, he gains. He gains a uh, resident energy, which makes it so that it's easier for him to um, to basically get his ultimate. And uh, his sequence node one is basically what it says here. During resonance evaluation, burning rhapsody, which is his main thing. Mortify launches coordinated attacks when on field characters perform their resonance skill. So she's gonna, be, he's gonna be very, very strong with you know obviously um, what's her name, Jin Shi. And then firing two resonance liberation Marco uh, Marcado hits, dealing fusion damage. So he is gonna be basically doing coordinated attacks with Jin Shi. And then this will give him basically resonance energy, which will make him uh, use his ult every single time, which is basically his whole gimmick. And I obviously do agree agree with the fact that Mortify is uh, tier 0 0.5 because of how high his utility is and how much he gives to other characters, especially you know, characters like Zinchi, which is the best DPS in the game right now. So Sanhua the same. She, honestly, Sanhua, what I like about her is that she has a, just a really good kit. Uh, her kit give her, gives her a good buff, um, but she is pretty hard to play, which it says here. She, it, she, does, she is pretty hard to play because of the timing that you need to do with her, um, uh, with her inputs. So 
combo is fast and putting every everything correctly and at the same time is overwhelming so you'd have to like time your hits and then you'd have to do your rotation correctly and then obviously you can use her rotation pretty pretty fast though because of how much consorto energy she gets and how easy it is for her to even though it's fast it's 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 um it gets even easier to do honestly once you get uh once you get the hang of it and you know you know it says here great burst of damage using her ultimate and run skill in combination with the fourth forte burst gains an absurd amount of concerto when when detonating the ice spawn yes that's true because when you when you hit it correctly when you hit the hit the bar correctly you gain a lot of fucking um Consorto energy, which makes it easier to quick swap. So low energy cost uh, of 100 means that she can constantly pull her, uh, pull off her super fast burst combo. So she's free. You get combo from getting a sequence, multiple viable rotation, all powerful enough you can use to fit. So you can basically put her when I, in whatever team you want. I might do a god on her. Honestly, she she looks very fun to play and very very easy to play. Honestly, but this one is the one that I don't agree with. Havoc Rover, bro. I think Havoc Rover should be put, I think, higher than Gian at this point because of how strong they are. Um, I've made a guy on it before uh, you guys should definitely check it out but havoc rover is definitely one of the best one of the best dps in the game and i i do not agree with t tier one i think i think uh, tier 0 0.5 it definitely should be put in for havoc rover because of how easy she easy they are uh, to get obviously they're free the the sequence now is very very easy to get as well just literally play the game and just um um and also uh the there's an echo primarily used for this character like uh, i i have to preface this like she, they're very very strong like very very strong and i don't really really agree with them putting it at tier one i feel like tier 0 0.5 is definitely a place for them to to put it in for sure uh you want woo yo i i've i i was surprised when they when they put him at tier one i actually kind of want to see why they put him at tier one there's so many cons takes up very little field time very easy to play and really full potential grants anti-interrupt aura that that's not that's not even that good though i don't know acceptable dps but low total damage making spending extra field punishing over output scales off defense instead of attack oh for really scales off of that i didn't know that wow that sucks that's ah that's kind of ah that's that's a pretty bad weakness i feel like they should put you put him at tier 2 to be honest or tier 1.5 something like that i mean he does give coordinated attacks which may, makes him a, a tiny bit higher probably i guess that makes sense why should be why she bro i think she should be but like 0 0.5 because she's the only like better healer to be played right now instead of arena because in tower of Versi, you'd have to play another team and by just does super super well i think uh what's what's important here to take note is that that she might get power corrupt also but she is a very very good character and then she does give uh cheat death which is insane like here this is um she granted cheat death uh after unlocking s5 in the form of full hero characters that would have suffered fatal damage so in in this uh, she's a has a dire competition with arena uh currently there is enough room for both in endgame meta though so that's not really a con honestly because right now in endgame you'd have to upgrade both to make them to make them to play basically to, to do really well in tower of adversity and i think uh boy she is just really really strong most attacks have a slight delay when it's used when performing them so because she's she's sluggish to play with uh yutan she does feel a bit hard to play or not hard to play but annoying to play honestly and what also makes her pretty pretty annoying is the fact that she needs to be on field for a pretty long time to do her combo i guess that that makes her you know fall a bunch of tears down but i don't know i feel like it compensates like the, the, the pros compensate a lot for the cons and i feel like she, she put the tier 0 0.5 honestly she's very very strong uh janshin i think she's uh, she's pretty good she, she's basically played as a support but you could play her whatever you want i think tier one is a really really good um really good place for her uh because there are other better characters to be played other than janshin but i feel like uh, you know janshin and jores uh really really like her and then you know they're gonna be playing her uh, pretty pretty well uh she she's she can be played in whatever team you want honestly uh uh, you can play her as a shielder you can play her as a uh damage dealer you can play her as a hybrid uh, you can play her as whatever you want as a support whatever you want so very very good honestly placement i do agree with that so um Kalcharo, bro you, this guy's getting power crept bro this is it, just, it is how it is, it is how it is bro he's been getting power crept over and over power crept by jian even at the start bro and he's got power crept by jinxi and chang li as literally the best dps and he's just like he's just getting worse and worse every time an update comes out so if you have kalcharo bro i think he's just gonna get power crept very very hard soon probably next set to your know, next update bro he's just, he's gonna probably go out here too because shang liao just is just a way better electro damage dealer than than him because of how complex his kid is and how much he provides and i think i think kalcharo is gonna get hit honestly it's gonna get worse and worse so make sure you save up for the characters that you need 
Uh, Chris Calcharo, yo, it's, it's at the end of his time, bro. It's, it hasn't been out. It, the game hasn't been out for two months, bro. It's, it's two months in, and the guy just got powercraft. I'm, I feel so bad for other players on. Uh, Dungeon, I feel like she's, she needs to be put in tier one, but the fact that she's super, super hard to play makes her a tier 1.5. I, I don't know how to play her, honestly. I'm just pressing buttons when I play her, and I feel like it's just people, players with hands might basically make her in par with shit like uh, Changli or Jinxi. Uh but mm, honestly, dungeon and Jorah's uh, should know how to play the, the the character pretty well, and I feel like uh, T1.5 is, I, I guess, a, a good spot for her since a lot of people don't really know how to play her. Honestly, uh, yo, this guy, yo, ass, bro, Ling Yang, put that guy in tier three, bro. This guy sucks, bro. Like I, I played him in like the um, like the the trial, bro. This guy's so bad, bro. He's so clunky and so, it feels so bad to play him. I think there's like one character or one player that know like finish tower of diversity in this in this uh with ling yang and it, it's literally one character like one person one per that's it the, the character just sucks like it, it's it's straight up doo doo bro and i think tier tier three is just like the best place for him let me see the, the all the cons for him honestly oh my god that's a lot bro. can fly bro what the fuck that shit's so bad bro unique playstyle not found anywhere else button mashing combo that's hard to mess up Somehow it's how unusual a hitbox makes it okay. Takes more time to get used and learn to other many other characters. Yo. He's just super trash, bro. Flying can be disorienting for some players. Flying mobility is somewhat limited. Making dodging and retarget. That's true. He's so clunky to play, bro. He's so clunky to play. He doesn't even he's not even that good, bro. It's not even that good, bro. I don't know, bro. Uh Shixia and Alto. I feel I feel like that's uh the, the gunner's uh problem. Like the fact that they're the gunner makes them pretty bad. But they do have um critical hit guarantee, which is like like so good, bro. Like if you have hands with these characters, yeah, you're gonna do crazy damage with this shit, bro. Because I guess I guess the game like all depends on the player, honestly. Like you can make any character good, except like Yang, bro. Honestly. Like, yeah, kind of asked. But yo, I think uh, Shixia and I think they're, they're, they're in the right spot. They're definitely in the right spot, but uh, they just need hands. They just need uh, like players that know how to play them. And yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Spectre Rover, very decent character. I mean, they can heal, they can be DPS, sub DPS. I mean, pretty pretty good car character, honestly. You can get S6 pretty easily. And yeah, just, just overall really, really good character, honestly. Not that bad. Um, Yang Yang, Yang Yang. I think Yang Yang should be put in tier 1.5, honestly. I've looked at her uh, dupes. So if you, if you guys go here, her dupes right there, bro. They're actually fucking strong though. Look, intro skill, the intro skill, increase the arrow damage and and uh, by 15%, which is very good. The heavy attack gives her resonance energy, which is pretty good. And then resonance skill damage is increased by 40%. What the fuck is that? And then the wind pulling effect is enhanced. So S3 is like a very big spike. Midair attack uh, damage is increased. So it's just buff after buff. Legend duration increased by 85%. S5 is broken. What the fuck is shit, bro? After reacting mid-air attack feather, and then it, and then she becomes a buffer too at S6, and she's so easy to get because she's a four star. You can get her for free at the same at the same time, and you can get her just by pulling for a five star character that you need. And obviously she's gonna be there, and you're gonna get her her dupes. I think I think Ling Yang should uh, not Ling Yang, sorry, Yang Yang should be put in either 1.1.5. I, I no, I think 1.5 is a very good part for her because there are many other characters that are better than her. But her her dupes are so strong, bro. Her dupes are so strong. She becomes a buffer. Her. She has a really high spike, which is crazy in my opinion. And yo, probably should be put in one, 1. 1.5 for sure. For sure, I don't, I don't agree with one two, honestly. Yo, this character's ass. Tao Chi, bro, just dog shit, bro. Like same as Ling Yang. Like she, she, she's so slow, bro. She's so slow, so clunky. Like, like, like the rotation becomes so bad because she's there. She scales off defense, which, which is so bad, bro, because you'd have to like use her all over and over again to convert the defense into attack. And it's just like overall just really bad, bro. Like if you love Tao Chi, because you know, let's, let's be honest, bro, because of the personalities, let, let's be honest. But if you like Tao Chi, you can play her, but don't expect any results from this character. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm gonna be completely honest. So that was basically it for the video. Uh, if you guys agree with this tier list, let me know in the comments down below. I feel like um, most of it is just very, very understandable. Um, except for like some of them, like I think Hava Krover should be up in tier 1, 0.5. Uh, this um, Yuan Wu should be maybe in 1.52. Uh, Baiji should be in 1, 0.5, I feel like, because she's pretty strong, honestly. <sighs> Yang Yang is very underrated, bro. She's so underrated. 
overrated, bro. I think she's so strong, bro. She can do so much for no reason. I feel I feel like she probably like 1.51. Um, Spectro is is good. Uh, Alto and Shixia probably like 1.5 to 2. Lingyang, I think she put it to 3. Uh, Tao Chi, 3, 2. Uh, so yeah, these these two are, are very good. Uh, Jian, yeah, he got power crept a bit, but he's still very strong, so 0.5. Encore, I do agree with. She's getting really strong with Chang Li. And then Chang Li, obviously, being Chang Li, very, very strong. These three are literally like the best three characters in the game. I very, very much agree with this. Uh, Yinlin is just super strong and very, very useful. And definitely would agree trying to pull for her when she when her rerun comes out. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about Pride Wins tier list. I think it's very good. Uh, and I hope, I hope one day, uh, you know, I can uh, get updated soon. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe for more Weathering Waves content. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.